Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Cayman Wall. I'm the Head of Research and Evaluation at Falch Ireland. I'm joined by my colleague Adrian O'Donoghue. Yeah, I work here with Cayman in the same section. So. And we're going to talk you through what's the big idea. This is a call that we have out at the moment for funding to develop new ideas for festivals and events. I'm trying to click on a slide here, so one moment. Okay, great. So what's the big idea? The idea here is we, we have a fund in place to develop new imaginative and innovative ideas mm -hmm. for participative events and festivals in Ireland. And the core thing to note is this is an ideas imagination fund. We're looking to generate the ideas for new festivals and events. We're not looking to deliver the festival or event just yet. That all going well will happen in due course. So what we're looking to do is provide a tailored package of support to research and develop the ideas that come in, the best ideas that come in. And I should say as well up front, this is a competitive process. Mm -hmm. We will have to shortlist those who get funding. Not every idea will uh, be able to go forward, just there isn't enough money to go around. Yeah. I suppose for this, this uh, webinar, Cayman is going to talk you through some of the background um, some of the policy objectives of Fall to Ireland and also then I will talk a little bit more specifically about what we expect from you in terms of the documentation and the idea uh, that we're looking for from you. And we should also share with the chat, the chat window as well. At the top of your screen there's a chat window. If at any stage you want to ask Adrian or myself a question, just click on that and away you go. A question will work its way into us. Hopefully we'll answer as many questions as we can during the session. If we don't get to answer the question, what we will do is address them after the webinar and we'll send out an email later on, maybe tomorrow, with a link to this, the presentation and the slides and also uh, unanswered questions will be covered off in that email as well. So please ask questions away. So don't be shy. So like Adrian said, I'm going to cover off some context and background information about Fall to Ireland and why we are working with festivals and then we'll go into some more specific information about this pilot scheme as well, and anything to do with that, ask any questions that Adrian will lead out on that piece. So, thank you. So now, looking at tourism policy and Falch Ireland's role, Falch Ireland uh, is, our legal name is the National Tourism Development Authority of Ireland, and there's a number of pieces of legislation that we have to work under. There's a specific uh, Tourism and Traffic Act, there's the piece of legislation, the National Tourism Development Authority Act, that set us up. But the core point I'm driving to here is that we can only spend money in Falch Ireland on tourism and promoting and developing tourism business into the country. So when we're funding festivals and events, we do so because it's a good way to promote and develop tourism. We, we're not doing it for the sake of the arts or the festival itself. To us, they're means to an end, and that's the environment in which we have to work. Um, policy also matters enormously. The government policy dictates what we do. And there's a, a national policy document called People, Place and Policy. And there's also an accompanying action plan to go with that, that you can see on the screen there. That also sets out a number of things we must do. And particularly of note in the festival space and the event space is that our focus is now on those events that are best placed to bring overseas visitors to Ireland rather than those that are best placed to generate profile or attention. It's all about getting business to come. So I'll move along. The way in which we are presenting Ireland at the moment to tourists, um, we're taking a very focused and singular approach. What we've discovered is going out with a lot of messages doesn't get you cut through. So we're going out and we're presenting Ireland uh, in three slices, as it were, to the tourists. Uh, we call them experienced brands in our lingo, but you, you can think of them as how we present Ireland and, and pieces of geography. Now, what we have as well is Dublin up first, and Dublin and the brand here is Dublin, a breath of fresh air. We did the work and what we found out was that Dublin was seen in the eyes of some visitors as old and unchanging, somewhat dusty. That's not the reality, that was the perception. So a lot of work has gone into that and it was led off by the Grow Dublin uh, Task Force, which has now become the Grow Dublin Tourism Alliance. And they are doing a lot of good work in presenting and developing Dublin in new ways for visitors. Looking next at the Wild Atlantic Way, that's a strategic initiative 
looking at how we present and uh, develop tourism along the full west coast of Ireland by leading out with a narrow strip along the Atlantic. And it is a long driving route. And again, back to the idea of scale mm -hmm. and singularity, cutting through, getting the attention of tourists before they come home, and before they leave home rather. And when they get here, it's moving them around Ireland as much as possible. Yeah. The more they move around, the more they spread the income around the country. Yeah, and that area covers all the way from Cork down up to Donegal. And, and back again, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, newest and freshest, we have Ireland's Ancient East. That was launched to the trade last year and the consumer launch was this year. That presents the East and the South of Ireland and its rich history and heritage in a way that's compelling to visitors. And there's a business challenge behind this, like there is behind each one of these um, ways that we present the country. And the business challenge here is to get more tourists to spend more of their time in this piece of Ireland and to stay there for longer and spend their money there, obviously, as well. But each of these uh, propositions, uh, as we call them, are experienced brands. They're about presenting Ireland in genuinely appealing ways that catch people's eye and then once they're here we're delivering on promises that our sister agency Tourism Ireland makes out when they're promoting Ireland overseas. The next thing to talk about and hopefully this isn't too much tourism lingo coming at you is our visitor segmentation. We have a segmentation model and we also have an experience model and what we're looking to, to get across here is that there are some very useful ways that have been developed to look at potential visitors to Ireland and getting a better understanding of what's in their mind and what they leave home for and what they want from a holiday helps us present, communicate and sell Ireland better to those visitors. We have three target segments and this segmentation model is all about motivations and understanding what people leave home for. It is not about demographic factors. It's entirely about getting a, getting a very good understanding of what they want from a holiday. So the culturally curious, social energizers and great escapers are our target segments. I could say a lot about them, but there are a lot of links in the back end of this webinar, the last couple of slides, but also on the guidelines that, that accompany this program. There's a lot that can be said about that, but yeah. just I suppose it's brief. important to consider these these types of individuals in terms of why they would come to your festival or event and I suppose that's what we're trying to point you towards. Mm -hmm. And looking at tourism experiences, what we have there is a way that is presenting Ireland and what you can do in Ireland in a credible and motivating way. I think there's a question just come in there. Yeah, um, just from Felicity, um, she says, I don't know what uh, county my festival will be in, can I still apply? Of course you can still apply. You, you don't need to know what county your festival is going to be in just yet, but what you should know is what slice of Ireland is it going to be in. Is it Dublin, Ireland's Ancient East, the Wild Atlantic Way? And Adrian will get into it at, at, uh, later on in this presentation. But what we will do is probably have a two round process whereby you fill in the application form and we may go back seeking further detail to clarify what exactly uh, is in your mind or maybe what exactly you want us to do for you. But sorry, going back to the experiences for a moment. What we have here is a, an insight that is all about getting people to move from considering a holiday in Ireland to actually booking now. And that is best done if you can present yourself in a way that is motivating and credible. The experiences that we have up there, they've been researched, they've gone down well with people, and they are going to be um, developed further, ideally through the festivals that we're working with now and the festivals that will come in in the future as well. So I'll scoot along now. Last couple of slides for me at the moment. What we have here, I suppose, is two particular business challenges uh, facing the tourism industry and the challenges that Falsh Ireland would love to address. And this map shows you a hotspot. So the bright red spots on this map, they're showing you where tourists overnight and holiday makers in particular. And those hotspots, as you can tell from eyeballing the map, they're predominantly around Dublin and then over on the west coast but particularly on the southern end of the west coast. So that map shows me a business challenge, a twofold business challenge. 
The first one is about the north of Galway piece. What can we do to get more business to the north of Galway? But in, there's the middle of the country as well. What can we do to develop tourism in the middle of Ireland too? So another question has just come in there from uh, Suzanne. Can we bring an idea that takes place in another country and propose it in Ireland? Of course you can. There's no idea um, that, that isn't welcome here. Yeah. But all, all we need to focus on is that will it address our business challenges? The first one I'm just outlining here is about the geographic piece. Can we get people to move around the country more and go in particular, particular mm -hmm. to the north of Galway, but also into the Midlands as well? Mm -hmm. Uh, the second challenge, and I have a couple of slides to help explain this one, it's not so much geographic, it's more about the time of the year in which people come. And looking at Dublin first, the, the chart up there shows hotel occupancy. Hotels tend to be fullest and getting full from probably April, May onwards until about September, October time. So between October and maybe Paddy's Day, that's when things are off peak in Dublin. So if you're looking to do something in Dublin and you want us to, um, to back your idea, try and think about what times of the year is there spare capacity to be filled. It's similar but not quite the same on the Wild Atlantic Way and in Ireland's Ancient East in that there is a peak period but it's much narrower. There's a longer off-season period and that shows it there. So you're probably talking off-season starting in September-ish and going on well past Paddy's Day in the Wild Atlantic Way, and that's equally true for Ireland's ancient east. So before I move on, two strong business challenges. There's a seasonality issue and there's a geographic issue. Okay, we have another question in from Elke. Uh, does it mean that, you're, that you wouldn't entertain ideas in any of the hotspots? No, that's not the case at that's all, Elke. If you're looking at, say, looking at something in a hotspot, like we have done in Falcher, Ireland. So we developed a festival here, a New Year's festival in Dublin, which is a known and recognised hotspot, but it was done in the off-peak. So in that case, we did it over the, the lull after Christmas, and there was spare capacity in the hotel system, so mm -hmm. prices were better. There was also spare capacity in the airline side of things, yeah. so it was cheaper to come and get to. So no, just... Keep in mind the idea you have yourself, how it can speak to the challenges that we're telling you are there to be resolved. That's the only caveat in that, Elke. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? So we'll move along again. Um, getting to the back end of my few slides now. I've told you, I suppose, a bit about how we present um, Irish tourism and what we can offer to the world. And I've told you about the way in which we try to understand consumers better and the business challenges. But at the moment, what we're talking about on this pilot scheme is looking at festivals and participant events that could be developed. Mm -hmm. We already have two schemes in place that provide funding for existing festivals and events. And those two schemes between them, they suck up just over three and a half. It's up to four million when you count in other funding we, we, we give them by way of supports. But these funding schemes are for delivering festivals and participant events. They're not to research and develop them. And the, the grants vary. On the regional scheme, a typical grant might be about 3,000, excuse me, 3,000. Yeah. And on the national side, a typical grant could be 50 odd thousand. But those schemes are all about running festivals. This one we're talking about today is a pilot scheme to develop the idea and the concept. Yeah, so it's not for running the project, not for running the festival or event. But should there be a good idea and many good ideas hopefully that arise we have other pots of money available to work with to, to deliver them on the ground now why are festivals and participative events so important we put almost four million in Falch ireland all told into festivals and events for a number of reasons the first one is they're fantastic opportunities to showcase our people, our culture, and our place. Which, if you go back to the experiences, it's a lot of what people leave home for. They're also very good ways of deepening someone's experience of Ireland mm -hmm. in that festivals, even if they didn't leave home for it, if you happen upon it, it can really enrich uh, your time here and, and experience you get. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic at moving tourists around the country and moving them around the year as well, which speaks to business challenges about sustainable employment and sustainable business operations themselves. We know from the research that tourists love interacting with Irish people in natural settings, and it's hard to get a more natural setting than a festival or an event. And of course, they're a bit of crack as well, which always helps. And I'm going to pass over to Adrian. Yeah. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, the, the pilot project itself, give you a little bit of background and about what we're trying to achieve. So the idea here is that this is a pilot initiative we're looking at to support creative thinking in the festivals and events sector and I suppose to allow an imaginative and innovative ideas to be investigated, to close gaps in the tourism calendar that Cayman has, has alluded to already and also the tourism brands we want to support and develop those. We want to encourage collaboration and clustering where possible and also uh, to engage with and hear from new voices um, from outside the usual channels. So what we have done is we've set up two documents. One is the guidelines and one is the application form. Both are available at, at a link on our site, which we'll give to you later. Um, but essentially what we're looking for is new or innovative uh, uh, ideas, imaginative ideas. Those that appeal and motivate overseas tourists. Um, and potentially, as Kim has said, take place off season. They don't have to, but ideally we'd like to see that. And again, mm -hmm. to promote our brands, appeal to the targeted, set, uh, targeted visitor segments that we've mentioned already, and maybe look to use digital um, technology, technology effectively. So within, and if, if I just go back, so within those guidelines also, we have some frequently asked questions. So we might not necessarily uh, answer everything with you today. Uh, but have a look in that. Some of the, the key questions are there. And ask questions now at any stage during the webinar. Happy to answer any questions we can today. Yeah. So how do we capture idea? Well, we've created a simple three-page, six-question idea form that you can download. I'm going to take you through those six questions to give you a sense of what we want um, to capture uh, in that. So the very first one is give us a sense of your festival. Um, what is it? What is or sorry, your festival or event? Um, summarize your idea, tell us as much as you can about it um, to give us a sense of what you're thinking of doing. So where will it take place in Ireland? Again, in which one of our brand areas will it take place? We are looking for regional spread and we're looking also to deliver new reasons for people to go to these areas. What time of the year will this, uh, your idea take place? Again, going back to what Cayman is say, saying, we're looking for not all, but ideas that will hit the off-season mark. We have a desire to fill in gaps in the tourism calendar and we want to see ideas that can motivate people to travel outside of high season. We want you to tell us why your idea is innovative. What makes it different from what's there already? Um, does it focus on historical or cultural assets? Is it a new type of event? Does it tell a story in a new way? Does it align very well with our own brands? Um, to the showcase the, land, the landscape, how is it innovative? So please uh, try and communicate that to us. So how also then, the fifth question is, how will it bring overseas tourists to the area? As Cayman has said, this is where our focus is. The festival or event is the, is the attraction um, that we, you know, which we're focusing on, I suppose, and developing. But the main thing we want to see is an increase in tourists into the different areas. In the past, we might have been interested in funding ideas and festivals that would have drawn profile or brought attention to an area. We're now looking at those that bring volume and people to come to the area. That's where our focus is, particularly on overseas visitors at the moment. Okay. So tell us uh, what type of tourists you expect it to attract. Why would it be of interest to them? Uh, is it bookable in advance? Is there any quirky or unusual innovative elements to this um, that might make people come? Um, are there any opportunities to participate or learn something um, from your idea? Have you drawn from some examples of international best, best practices which have been successful? And then the final question we have in, in the application form is what else would you like to tell us about your event? Is there something that maybe you haven't captured already? Um, you know, what potential partners have you lined up uh, uh, already? Have you got some idea champions, for example? Have you any research or insights, insights carried out already um, that support your idea? Or even other asks you want to make of us and things you want us to do. Um, Fiona has asked a question here. Do I have to calculate the amount of tourists that would come? Not in your application form. Um, and probably we will explore that in the developmental stage with you about maybe how attractive your idea will be to potential So um, we're not tourists. looking at this stage to put a quantification on it in terms of the biggest number wins. It's not an arms race for numbers at all. No. So you've completed the application form and it's now with ourselves here in Fault Ireland. So what will we do? 
We'll compile a short list of the best ideas. We will make um, contact uh, with those people on the list and may, we may seek some additional information that, that will help inform uh, our decision. And also we will look for you to come in and invite, we will invite you in to talk to us, um, give a presentation about your idea and we'll explore it a little bit more with you. And John just asked, if I get onto the shortlist, what else will you be asking me? Well, certainly it depends um, what is in what has been covered in your application form. But obviously we want to maybe ask you a little bit more in terms of how how evolved maybe your idea is, what are the extent of partnerships that you might it's, have. It's, so it depends a, on what we get from you one, initially, yeah. initially. But we suspect we might just need to um, ask a little bit more. What we would like to get is, is, a, is a deeper understanding of it but also maybe understand better what it is you want us to do and what have we need to give you yeah. to, to make this come to life. Yeah, exactly. So following that process, we will select a number of winning ideas uh, which will be taken through to the next stage. So if you are a successful idea, what will you get? Will you get tailored supports um, developed for you? Um, we will provide between five and 10,000 euros worth of supports um, and also within Fall to Ireland, we'll provide some expertise for you across marketing, sales and, and digital, etc. divisions as necessary to develop your idea. These, this, uh, these, this five to 10,000 euro can be used for feasibility studies, research, learning journeys or ex expert advice, but also other justifiable activities. So we'll work that out with you. And Brian has asked a question about ownership rights of his idea. Yeah, so we have given uh, as was a guarantee of confidentiality within the um, within the application form. You'll see it in the details. So it it will be, it unless you you let us use it, um, it it's your idea. Mm. Um, and just coming back to the supports that we that we will provide to you, depending on what the supports are, we'll either um, can help commission the the work for you, work with you to identify um, someone to do the work or to, to undertake the research or whatever the, it is, or we will give you the money and let you uh, go and, and do the piece of uh, work that you want to do to develop your idea a bit further. And it'll probably come up, but Ellen has just asked, if I apply for funding under this scheme, can I then apply for funding later to actually deliver the event? You can, absolutely. Um, but again, as Cayman has outlined, it's a because you got funded under this initiative, it do, doesn't um, make it easier for you to get funding. It remains a competitive process across the national and regional what festivals. What I'm saying is this, this scheme is all about developing the idea and progressing the idea. It's a lot more expensive to deliver it, and we will hope to have the funds to do that in due course, but we'll have to work on that one. But there are already two schemes in place between the, the national and the regional festivals and participate event schemes to fund delivery of actual festivals and events. Yeah. Of course, you can fund them yourselves as well. Mm. You don't have to rely on us. <laughs> Don't ask a good question. Can, you, can I submit more than one idea? You absolutely can. And we've already see, received more than one idea from individuals. So submit as many ideas as you want, but make, make them good. <laughs> <laughs> um, multiple, yeah. multiple good ideas are welcome. Yeah. Jenny asks, what about events that may happen outdoors without any box office element? Will the fund cover the costs of putting the event on? The fund won't cost, um, uh, cover the costs of putting on the, the event. This is about um, realizing that your idea is something... It's conception development. Conception development. It's about um, making sure that your idea is valid and, and taking it to the next stage and maybe identifying, again, people you need to work with, what you need to do to the next stage. But so the, the fact that the idea itself doesn't have a box office or an income stream by way of tickets is, is not a consideration at this stage. It's about the strength of the idea and would it get people to come to Ireland and spend their time here mm -hmm. and get them to move around here and particularly move around in the off-season. So the fact there's no box office is not an issue for us. Yeah. So we, we don't want to uh, receive uh, requests to support the rollout of any, uh, any festivals or events. There isn't enough money in the kitty for that. No, and it's not no. our intention. Mm. A question here is, we are trying to develop a literary festival with a big name to open the festival in early October. When do we submit, sorry, when do we need to have our ideas submitted? I'm not sure if the question, Donna, is about funding the research to develop the idea, because the idea sounds like you've worked on it, rather than developing the actual festival itself. If it is to develop and deliver the festival, then we'll be opening for applications for 2017. In August. In so September, August yeah. time. 
for funding for 2017 and for the regional scheme it's probably around Christmas time until the end of January. Okay and maybe just on that question we will we'll talk about uh, closing dates for this particular call as well in, in, in a mm. few minutes. Um, so we, we have another question if circumstances change uh, after having received research funding would we be, be obliged to pay back the grant? So no. Yeah. Um, and again, this is, alludes maybe to the slide that, that I have yeah, over here. Up, yeah. Yes. Um, so, and I'll, I'll come back to, and answer that question in this slide. So what do I need to deliver? So if, so we have selected you, we've given you funds and we've supported you through your process. What is the end product for us? What mm. do we want from you? We simply want you to produce a report scoping out your idea and your conclusions about its, about its potential to become a reality. So what have you learned and what how has this process moved things on for you? We will ask you to come in to make a presentation to a panel of experts to outline the learnings and, and, and what you've developed. And just coming back to that question, I was there, it is okay to fail. It may well be the case that it's a great idea in paper. We will run with it with you. And then we go to explore it and actually the market is just not there. Uh, for, but that's okay. This is the space and this is why we're running this, um, this, this pilot one, yeah. initiative. Mm. Um, you will, of course, still need to produce a report and share the experiences and uh, what you've learned with us. Um, but it, it is okay to, to fail. Brian asks a question, what is the timeline for completion? And what is the time when funding... Sorry, what is the time when funding... For the completed report. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, there isn't a defined timeline in place just yet. We'll work that out with each um, person that's getting the, the funding to see yeah. what is a reasonable amount of time and space to develop the idea. We're not too prescriptive on that. No, we give it the time and space it needs. But obviously, if your idea is to develop a festival in 2017, you'd want to progress it pretty quickly. If it's for 2018, that's different. So it yeah. all depends is the answer, Brian. Yeah. I suppose we're, we, we are not putting any constraints on the way we're doing this by uh, giving a one-size-fits-all um, deadline for when, when you become engaged with us. So um, th there is nothing um, decided as yet, but we, we don't want it to go on forever, but we will take into account the challenges that you will try to uh, try to address. I, I, my own gut feeling would be three to four, maybe five, six months of a, of a development period may be appropriate, but we, we don't know until we see what the, the concept is. Yeah. So, um, just moving on, just to reiterate some things again, to highlight about the scheme, the fund is to develop ideas for new festivals and participate events, but not to finance the running of any festival or events, whether, whether they're new or they're, they're pre-existing. Um, and existing festivals, we, we, we do not want to see um, uh, applications from you because we, we will not fund you. Existing festivals running the same kind of thing in the same kind of place. Yes. If there's a new component or, or a yes. significant new element, that, that's different. But yes. if it's the same as, as it was last year, that's not the fun for you right yeah. now. Yeah, so maybe you're, you are an existing uh, festival, you run in June, and maybe um, you, you're proposing something that might well happen in December. Well, we'll be interested in that because then that aligns yeah. with the seasonality piece. This is open to anybody to submit, yeah. and we've made an extra yeah. efforts to ensure that this goes yeah. beyond the, 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 usual, channels, the yeah. usual channels that, that we interact with. Um, and as uh, mentioned earlier, all ideas submitted will be treated as confidential and they will not be shared without your permission. So, and there's a question, so yeah. there's a question that's come in here. Are you looking for events that leave us a legacy, a tourism legacy in, in the location where they take place? It's a good question. Um, I mean, we can have one-off um, events that deliver. Um, ideally, you'd like to see something that has a bit of sustainability to it. But if, if it's an event that's one off and it's a mm. commemoration, maybe be fine, yeah. uh, of, of, a, yeah. of an anniversary or, or of so something. We're open minded is the answer to that yeah. one, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how to get your idea to us. So what you need to do is go to the web address there, um, which, which is at my festival idea on the Fault Ireland website. Submit to... Um, this email address and do so by noon on Tuesday the 7th of June that's the Tuesday after the bank holiday and we will respond to you as soon as, po as possible of course obviously depending on uh, how many submissions that we and can do. I should say there's a lot of interest in this scheme typically we might have about 50 people registering for a webinar today's webinar we had three times as many people registering for it so there's a strong interest and a lot of uh, people have already applied 
um, Ella's asked, um, and she's asking about the match funding. If you don't have the match funding yourselves, what do we do? Well, just to say, um, in Fortune Ireland's case, the, the funding we typically give to a festival may be between 10 to 20 percent of the costs of running that festival. It's very unusual for us to fund much more than that in a festival. So other funding partners tend to be in place for festivals. And I wonder, um, I suppose she relating that question to, to the monies, the five to 10,000 we might provide here. Oh, excuse me, sorry, yes. I'm thinking of delivery. Yeah. There is no requirement to match funds what we are contributing to you or hope to contribute to you to develop the concept. Not in that regard, no. Okay. So we have another question in from Jackie. If my idea is to revitalize a festival that took place a number of years ago, will it qualify for consideration? Yes. I think so. Yeah. yeah. If it's if it's a, a good idea. Um, it was good before. It's yeah. still good, of course. Yeah. We're, we'd like to know why it's not running now, and maybe that's that's the thing we can investigate with you, and mm. there's this potential for it. So we wouldn't rule that out. Um, we have um, a slide here, which is some useful links. So again, if you want to go a little bit deeper into some of the, the things that we spoke about today, in particular, uh, what Cayman's... Uh, uh, part was looking at the Wild Atlantic Way, the, the policy areas, um, we have a number of slides there. Um, and also, uh, and just to reiterate, um, we if you have any questions, please email us at myfestivalidea at faultireland.ie um, during this process and even, even afterwards if you wish, and we will, we will come back to you with any questions that you might have. Um, just to reiterate again, the deadline is June 7th, um, so it's not too long away, so um, I don't see us, any other questions coming in at the moment. But anything that has, that has not been answered today, we will get you an answer tomorrow with the email out to all who registered for this, mm -hmm. with the web link as well to the, uh, the webinar itself. So thank, thank you very you. much.